What isn't known about the series is that both creators widely hate Disney monopolizing it, and the show's original concept goes beyond just a children's cartoon. Once, an episode about Dr. Heinz Tuffenschmerz's real intentions was produced secretly by a good part of the staff who ran the risk of being fired without thinking twice. Even some of the original voice actors were involved. The episode was eventually leaked online by an anonymous poster, who uploaded it on a little trendy cartoon forum. That particular day, my computer was doing an annoying noise like if it were a whisk. My brother insisted me to examine it or the CPU was going to literally burn up. Anyways, I was browsing this online forum when I discovered a post about an unreleased episode of Phineas and Ferb. Curious, I clicked on a download link included by the poster. I had some time to download it before having to visit my grandparents' house. Eventually, we got back at around 1 am. As soon as I got home, I started the episode and, as expected, my computer kept making that hideous noise. The episode was called The Horrible Death of Phineas and, according to the summary, this was an alternative episode to the one where they're finally caught and sent to Camp Smile Away. The episode began as usual, with both Phineas and Ferb having Isabella's troop help them modify their family car into a flying machine. Also, Ferb was building an airport tower for the car. This time, a huge crowd is present to witness the completed masterpiece. Meanwhile, Perry is called upon by Major Monogram to fight Tuffenschmerz. He tells Perry that Tuffenschmerz is planning to destroy the entire tri-state area using an atomic bomb and he must stop him. When Perry goes to battle Tuffenschmerz at his headquarters, the doctor explains how he's truly fed up with being treated like an imbecile and plans to kill everyone by detonating a nuclear warhead. Suddenly, Tuffenschmerz drew a pistol and opens fire against Perry, who is forced to run away because Perry can't fight him while he's holding such a weapon. The gun is real, as it made holes in the lair's walls and ceiling. His escape followed with a rather demented and cruel, red-eyed Tuffenschmerz who had an enraged expression on his face. I was completely shocked by the overall depiction of him. It appeared as if Tuffenschmerz had finally gone mad. Tuffenschmerz chased after Perry during a short sequence and he is almost killed, but luckily manages to avoid the shots. When they reached Phineas' backyard, Condens drags Linda to see Phineas and Ferb's invention as in every episode. Soon, Phineas walks towards his mother to show her the flying car. However, in that exact moment, Tuffenschmerz opens fire and Perry dodges the bullet. A slow motion sequence plays as Tuffenschmerz accidentally shoots Phineas. When the bullet hits him, everything turned monochrome as hide and seek by Imogen Heat played. Phineas was now lying in the lawn, but with a pool of blood drawn in the habitual Phineas and Ferb style. The video goes back to color when Phineas was in the lawn and it's noticeable, a bright red puddle of blood. The crowd glares, horrified at Tuffenschmerz, and the scene cuts abruptly after showing Phineas lying in a puddle of his own blood, staring at the sky. It was here that Act 1 ends. Act 2 started with a funeral, and now everything seems extremely depressing. The mortuary was mostly black and the stained glass windows, which enlightened the room, were a depressing monochrome tone. Candace, Linda, Lawrence, and Ferb all looked very forlorn. The explorer troop were lamenting as well, and the camera focused during two insufferable minutes of Isabella crying inconsolably. It sounded real, as if Isabella's voice actress was actually crying while filming the episode. Candace, in extreme grief, regrets about this while furiously hitting Phineas' coffin, crying that this wouldn't have happened if she didn't try to catch them. Act 2 cuts abruptly to black. Act 3 being with the text two days later. On which Phineas' house is seen from the outside, but it's cloudy and gloomy. Candace is in her room, extremely stressed, with a rigid smile and hanging a rope on the ceiling while humming the Beatles' song Yellow Submarine. Soon, Jeremy enters Candace's house through the backyard and goes into the kitchen. After offering his condolences to Linda, he asks for Candace. Linda happily tells him that she's upstairs. But when Jeremy enters her room, 
he sees with horror that Candace hung herself and died just a few minutes ago. Jeremy takes down the corpse and passionately kissed it. However, when Linda enters to see if everything is alright and after seeing this, screams Jeremy, how could you? Thinking that Jeremy choked her to death. After that, it cuts to a scene where both Phineas' parents, Ferb, Isabella, Valjeet, Buford, Schmertz's ex-wife Charlene, Vanessa, Major Monogram, Carl, and Perry are inside a state prison with Schmertz strapped to an electric chair. All of them have sick and twisted smiles with the purest, unhealthiest, sadistic joy. He begs for mercy, but Major Monogram simply orders to proceed with the execution. Perry, smiling in a sick and morbid way, switches on the chair. Right before his death, a sequence of real photos appeared on screen. They depicted a man wearing a lab coat and a little girl playing in a park. Although the actors didn't resemble Tuffin Schmertz or his daughter, Vanessa, they clearly represented them. After that, the last thing he sees was Vanessa kissing passionately with her mother. Tuffin Schmertz finally dies in a brutal way, electrocuted on a slow, lethal voltage to lengthen his suffering. At the end, Ferb simply states, irony is cruel, but not as much as hell. The episode ended with Schmertz's lifeless body being thrown on a pile of decaying corpses, along with Jeremy's fresh corpse. The next morning, I looked again for the episode. However, the user was banned and the file possibly no longer exists.